traditions clearly saw the divine in the natural world, in which they were far more in sync than we are, to the point sometimes, of course, of, of deifying the natural world, confusing uh, the, the sign for the signifier. But before we judge them too harshly, the um, awareness of um, divine signs in that nature led them to always seek to maintain an equilibrium with it, something we certainly could learn from. Um, and many verses of the Quran really um, indicate the closeness of natural phenomena to uh, revelation, the close relationship between the two, uh, and how much we can glean from being observant of the natural world. And the natural world is described to us not only as a sign, but something which worships God, or as I like to describe them to my kids, Muslim plants, Muslim rocks, <coughs> Muslim clouds. Um, it's particularly moving to me, uh, a verse that says, and I quote, and there is not a thing but that it glorifies him with his praise, but you do not understand their glorification. And one hadith, which I have to quote because of my particular love of, of um, horses, um, which, and that I find incredibly touching, uh, which was the, when the Prophet said, saw some people sitting on animals, and he commented, and I quote, Keep them safe and sound when riding them, and we, when leaving them, don't use them as chairs for your side talks in the streets and markets. A ridden animal might be better than its rider, and might remember and mention God more than its rider does. If that's not humbling, I don't know what is. And I, um, again, when I live in the Middle East, uh, it's not exclusive to the Middle East, but I just remember seeing oppressed people oppressing animals, and I just traumatized me. Um, in order to remind us of the importance of the natural world, um, Allah has even tied benefits to preserving them and protecting them. Um, uh, one of the many wisdoms, I would assume, because self-centered humans that we are, we need incentives for something which actually serves us ultimately. So that, for example, the Prophet said, whoever waters a date or a loat tree, it's as if he has given a drink to a thirsty believer. And that just highlights, I think, just how elevated the natural world is, particularly when we think of how instrumental our own approach to nature often is, as our responses are governed by the cost-profit considerations imposed by unbridled capitalism. In the case of the Prophet, in his youth, if we look at his life, um, he was... Uh, rather than remaining in the city, um, he was sent in his youth to back to the desert to, to be a herdsman, giving him the freedom to develop his spirit in close connection to the natural world and unfiltered by the social norms which sometimes brought up original pristine values, what we might know as our fitrah. We know from a hadith of the Prophet that all of the Prophets tended sheep at some point in their life. And I think it's interesting to think about that school of divine learning, the idea that herding animals, caring for them, often alone with only the herd for company immersed in nature, can afford you uh, the type of insight that makes you a recipient for divine knowledge. It's really an insight into the experiences which shape prophetic character, particularly, I think, for many of us city folk who so rarely connect with nature. Um, I was watching a, a Jamie Oliver program um, a, a while ago in which he was trying to create healthier school meals in the US. And one of the challenges he had was trying to get <coughs> children to connect with their food. Many of the children couldn't identify a tomato. Some didn't know what chips were made from. And it seems to me that when we lose that connection to our food, it's not just sad, it's really losing a window of understanding um, and, and so many of us are lacking that today, I think. Um, if we think about the fact that some scholars refer to the universe as Kitab al Manshur, the displayed book, which confirms and supports the truth of revelation in the written book, it's an indication of the extent to which preserving the natural world is actually like preserving a, a, a support to revelation. Um, to come back to the case of the Prophet Hassan, his personal development. <clears throat> had occurred in circumstances which favoured a, pro uh, a proximity to the divine through this relationship to nature and the elements. And it comes as no surprise that one of the prophets' messages to the world was one of mercy towards animals, one which 
we could really do with recalling today in a world where our appetite for cheap meat often trumps the basic conditions of decency which animals are entitled to enjoy by divine right. Um, animals are not our property, he taught, to treat as we wish, rather we are custodians of God's will on this earth and obligated to treat them and the rest of creation with the deference owed to God's creation. And it's worth recalling that the prophet Sazan's relationship to God's creation was a symbiotic one. Some of the stories that I find the most touching are those to do with animals in uh, the Quran or in the Seerah. So that when the prophet Sazan was himself in danger following the Hijrah, he took refuge in a cave to escape his enemies and three things protected his cover, all of them manifestations of natural majesty, the growing of a shrub to cover the entrance, a spider who'd woven its web between the shrub and the entrance, and a pair of doves who'd built their nest close by. As Guy even so poetically put it, nature reconciles a spirit who protected God, God's messenger. The least we can do is return the favor. Um, or when the Muslims decided to return to Mecca to perform the pilgrimage, and the Prophet Sassan took a cue from his camel, which halted and refused to go on when they reached the plain of Al-Hudaybiyah. And that was seen as a sign that they should halt and negotiate the pilgrims' entry into Mecca. Or one of the trees that was said to have cried when the Prophet, peace be upon him, who typically leaned upon it while he was giving his sermon, had moved elsewhere to deliver it. We know from Hadith that the mercy he showed all of God's creation is in fact central to the believing personality. Um, one of his sayings is that all creatures of God are the family of God and the best love of God is the one who loves best his creatures. Um, I think I might have time for just one more story, if I may. Um, those who study the Sira of the life of the Prophet will be familiar with it. Um, but there's a story predating the birth, his birth, which recounted the coming, the coming of a prophet. Uh, of a prophet. Um, the incident of the elephants, it's known, and it's referenced in the Quran. It refers, refers, to, it refers to the attempt of uh, an Abyssinian leader to destroy the Kaaba shortly before the birth of the prophet, peace be upon him. And it's one of the reasons that we're able to trace the year of his birth in a society where people didn't keep birth records. But in this particular case, the Abyssinian army attempted to destroy the Kaaba using elephants. But the animals actually refused to charge the Kaaba. Although they would obey commands to go in any other direction, they would not charge the Kaaba. And the army actually was eventually defeated by birds who, under divine command, launched rocks at them. So, Pamela, if we want to think again about our responsibility towards an environment that serves Allah at, at every call, so stories like these others remind us of the profound link between the divine and the natural world, a reminder that whereas, whereas we are to varying degrees more or less in sync with the divine, the world around us represents the state of perfect harmony which we as human beings can only really ever aspire to. The world isn't just there for us to protect for the future of our resources or that of our children, but for us to recall what true harmony is, that we might retain the signs which hint at God's imprint and learn from the far better Muslims in plants, animals, and other forms around us. Thank you very much. All the good is from Allah, and all errors are my own.